All right, welcome everyone. This is um, one of our last events for the Boltathon, and this is the Hackathon presentation. And so I'm really excited because all of our hackers have been building um, amazing stuff, and I'm really excited to see what uh, what they're going to uh, demonstrate for us today. And um, you know, I think one of the advantages of having an online conference is that you know. Uh, hackers can focus. They can focus on actually building instead of getting distracted with all the speakers and then um, all the other side events that might go on in a regular conference. So um, yeah, we have over 10 or 12 submissions um, to go through. And so that's super exciting for me. Uh, each presenter is gonna get about five minutes to present their project and to demo it. And that'll start as soon as uh, they set up and they're ready to go. I'll be timing it. And then um, afterwards, the judges, uh, we'll be asking, we'll comment or ask questions, and that'll be about another uh, five minutes um, or less. And so for our judges, uh, I want to introduce you to them very briefly. The first person is Zan from Blockstack. Hey, Zan, how are you doing? Doing well. Hey, thanks for joining us. Yeah, happy to give a brief intro. Uh, um, I've been on the Blockstack PVC core team for about two years now, and my focus is on uh, everyone building with our tech on the application layer. So pleasure to be here. Cool, thanks. All right, the next person is Josh. Hey everyone, nice to be here. And uh, it's just been fantastic watching uh, the presentations and watching this uh, amazing event go down. Yeah, and so uh, Zan and Josh are also uh, two of our sponsors and they've been gracious enough to, to use their time to be, a, to be a judge. So thank you for that. Um, Trey, why don't you say what's up? Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm Trey from SparkSwap, uh, another one of the sponsors here. And um, yeah, this has been a, a great conference so far, and I'm really excited to see what the Hackathon projects look like. Yeah, not only that, but you're also a speaker too, so that's... Um... <laughs> yeah, just, just really going all in on the, on the Boltathon. Love it. Uh, and then we also have Patrick. He is also the co-organizer of the Boltathon, along with myself, and we also would be, are going to be judges on this panel as well. Yep. All right. um, yeah, you want to say a little something, something, Patrick? Uh, no, I just want to say thanks to everybody for uh, coming and uh, presenting your products. I'm really excited to see what, uh, what everybody's come up with this weekend. Cool, cool, cool. All right, um, I'm going to do a screen share real quick. All right, I just want to go over um, the criteria, the judging criteria very quickly. Um, hopefully you guys can see this. Uh, the community voting uh, is going to be weighted 50-50 between community voting and the judge panel. Um, uh, the first part is uh, the voting aspect. So hackers, attendees, uh, anyone with the Lightning Network node can vote on their favorite projects after the presentations. And, um, the, and what's going to happen is the first top five projects uh, will be awarded uh, points. And then uh, first place will be given 10 points, second place will be given nine points, eight points, seven points, six points. Right. And um, you will, uh, one thing to note is that if you do vote with Satoshis, uh, this, your votes will go, or the sats would go directly to the organizers of the Boltathon. And that's, and, uh, that's just to disincentivize people from voting for their own projects because um, uh, before we were doing revenue share and then we realized, you know, they can kind of vote for themselves uh, through that and, and keep, the sets that way and so that that wasn't very smart of us <laughs> this is all a social experiment uh, the next weighted portion is the judge panel this is when sponsors and speakers will participate in judging in the panel and um, they'll submit reviews for the presented projects and uh, the three criteria would be three uh, theme adherence the theme is hack social and within hack social there are two subcategories it is a social engagement and then a social good social engagement is anything that helps uh, foster you know, interactivity uh, with lightning between different people. And then um, social good is just making the world a better place. Any, any tool, lightning network tool that will improve um, humanity in some shape or form. It can be at a global scale or even in a local, local community scale. The second criteria is the wow factor and then the real world use case. And um, these three criteria will be uh, uh, point, given points on up to 10 points per category. And so uh, if they did a really great job on theme adherence, they get 10 points there. If um, they didn't do any theme adherence, then they would get a one. And then 
Um, again, just like how in the community voting, uh, points will be dispersed to the first to fifth place uh, projects, and first place gets 10 points, second place gets nine points, eight, seven, and six. And what we're going to do is we're going to add um, the top five projects from the community voting and the top five projects of the judge panel and whichever project and those combined scores will give us the first, second, and third place prizes. And if there's any um, ties, the, the project with more judge points will be uh, favored. They will win out um, in, in the event of a tie. All right. And so that's kind of how the uh, yeah, that's how it's all going to go. And just FYI, this is what it looks like. And this is the order of presentations that people are going to go. So somebody make this. Um, <laughs> you're going to be up next uh, very shortly. Okay, so get ready. And then um, this is also where everyone is going to vote just to quickly demo. You can click vote, enter th uh, the amount of Satoshis you want to uh, vote with. And then this is your QR code or your LN invoice that you can pay right away. Cool. All right. And if anybody's not present yet, we can always circle back at the end and see if there was anybody that we missed. Cool. What is the Slack channel? The Slack channel is, um, is actually our blog view Slack channel. Um, I can drop an invite in there for people if they want it. Let me do that real quick. Okay, cool. Uh, while he's doing that, is the, uh, is the first product ready? Yeah, Fiat FJ. If you are I here, actually, I think he is one of the people that said he might be a few minutes late. Uh, he was at a wedding or something. And he was trying to get home really quick. So. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Well, we can move uh, to the second person on that list, and that is. Uh, it's loading. Pay and watch. Is pay and watch here? Yeah, hi guys. Great. Okay, why don't you uh, take a minute to set up, get your screen share going, and whenever you're ready, I'll start the timer and then we can get, um, and then we can uh, go through your demo. Uh, yeah, I'm probably ready. You ready? Sharing, yeah, one minute for screen sharing. Okay. Uh, yeah, so probably this one. Uh, do, you, do you see it? Can you yes, watch sir. it? Yeah, that's great. So probably you also uh, can see me. Uh, my project uh, that I want to present you is a uh, streaming platform or just streaming rooms uh, with lighting. So it's uh, using WebRTC technology. Uh, it's also peer-to-peer -peer and uh, lighting just to peer-to-peer. -peer. And uh, I would like to present you like um, smooth user experience uh, via only browser, uh, Chrome extension. Uh, it's almost like uh, Joule but uh, much more easier and it just communicate with your local node and to do some requests uh, like pay, pay invoice, check balance and so on. Uh, also there is um, another laptop uh, next to me and uh, uh, there is um, also this room but um, this is stream and uh, there is a client that watch the stream. So uh, when I created this room, uh, I start streaming uh, for everyone who wants and uh, everyone can join this room. So I joined in, uh, it's SimNet, local SimNet, so I just demonstrated locally. Uh, and uh, I joined it from, uh, from my second local machine uh, and uh, 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 for every uh, second uh, it pays uh, 10 satoshi uh, while stream is 
Oh, yeah, no. it sounds like I will it start your video. I will talk about it. Oh. What? It looks like your video is a, a choppy little Probably. bit coming in and out. Would mm -hmm. you mind repeating the last uh, bit of your piece? Uh, yeah, from what moment? Hi. Uh, like f uh, from like 30 seconds ago. 30 seconds, yeah. Rewind 30 seconds. Okay, so uh, I described that I have second lot of machine and uh, have a client there. So when I pause the stream, my payments stopped there and uh, I stopped uh, earning lightning for my stream. So uh, then I can continue my stream there and I al also will continue earning money. So while I pay in, we are uh, also Lightning Network and using WebRTC. So changing of invoice is uh, uh, also via WebRTC technology. So it's almost fully peer-to-peer. -peer. Only part is that is not peer-to-peer -peer is um, discovery of uh, each other. So like signaling protocol. So I believe that it's one of the like most um, straight uh, demonstration of lightning technology. So it's micro payment for something like streaming. I believe that it will be uh, like future of lightning use cases. So that's all. Great. Uh, you, you have about uh, one minute left, but that's not a problem. So our judges, uh, do you guys have any comments or questions? Man, it's really cool. I, I, I love it. It's, it's really a great example of streaming money. And uh, this is sort of the dream of, for me, for Lightning, is seeing these tiny little transactions being able to be streamed. And not only for video, but I don't know, for filling up a car with electricity or whatever. I think this is really... Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think the biggest uh, people that will jump on this is, of course, the porn industry grabs everything first, so the cam girls will probably be onto this. Yeah. So I also thought so when made it. Cool. So, so any questions? Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. question. Uh, so are we actually we're watching you live stream on your browser, right? That's not the Zoom client picture there. Yeah, that's my. I, you can see that it's like my local page in the okay. browser. So then, this is like a video tag, and it's receive it. Uh, this this one not receiving this one, uh, like uh, record capture my cam, and this is like stream I creating and another computer. Uh, so here is this one. Uh, seeing me. Cool. So you can so like earlier when you stopped the payments, that was actually the other computer stopped watching, right? Yeah. So if I just pause, you can see that my payments just stopped and my video is paused. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. My, my question was going to be kind of more on the use case. Um, what do you what do you anticipate? You know, people would want to use this for. Mm, probably any common streaming uh, streaming platform, but uh, they are centralized, and so uh, these stream uh, streaming platform take take a lot of uh, commission, take a lot, take huge fee. So this is almost fully peer to peer. Only you need some server for discover each other, and via lighting technology, it will be like uh, trustless because uh, you can stop or stop watching stream or just stop streaming in any moment if you see that you don't receive your money or don't like this is the content and for streamers it's also uh, good because they don't they get more money because uh, fee is lower so any uh, streaming technology streaming platform streaming technology cyber sport also, like porn and industry. What what happens if a node uh, that you're connected to within the the channel sort of runs out of funds? 
So you start to the fans and uh, a person who watched the stream will stop uh, seeing stream. So it's like a common uh, problem of routing and uh, channel balances. Yeah. So and, uh, will it start start to find a ahead, new Josh. route? Sorry. Will it start to find a new route uh, or try to find a new route as soon as it? Uh, uh, what? Comes? Yeah. A, a new route to the. Uh, to the end point. Ah, oh, so probably it, yeah. If, the... if there is is there another road, so it's like using of call pay invoice, and if if LND could pay invoice, so it uh, will. I see, yeah. I see, I see. Yeah. So, do I need a special node uh, to make these payments? Because uh, LND right now doesn't have like automated payments, right? Uh, yeah. So I, as I mentioned, I made uh, simple uh web uh, extension uh it's like jewel so it connect to your local node and uh, um, make uh, possible your web page using something like web webln so the uh, web page start become uh, to uh, uh, it could pay now like using uh, lnd calls like pay invoice, check, check invoice, check balance, and other. That's really cool. Great. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. Yeah. Um, thank you. All right. Would you mind stop stopping your screen share? The next person we have on deck is uh, somebody make this. Have you joined here yet? If you have, raise your hand. Okay, I don't see him. All right. Uh, the next person is Bottle. Hey, guys. How you doing? Great. Great. So get your so screen, get your screen, screen set, up. set up and uh, we'll give the judges some time to vote. Can you all see my screen okay? Yes, sir. It says bottled lightning for social payments. Sweet. It's all about the puns. <laughs> okay, that was the timer if you guys heard that in the background. Okay. Uh, are you ready to go? Yeah, absolutely. Here we go. Uh, just say when and then I'll start the timer. Cool, let's go. Um, so I'm Pete from uh, Block Matrix. We're a small blockchain infrastructure company in the UK. There's only four of us. Uh, we've had an absolute blast building this out. We only uh, set up our first lightning node on Thursday. So everything you see here is what we've done over the past 48 hours. We've had fun. Our families haven't. We, we, we've hardly not been back. Um, but I, we hope some of you know the, the love we put into this is uh, you know, you can see that in the demo. So um, we, the theme was brilliant. It was social. And we thought, well, how can we unlock all of that potential in social? There's 3 billion users out there and a very small fraction of them are using crypto and especially using, you know, Bitcoin, the Lightning Network. So we thought, well, how do we remove all friction for people who use social media to onboard them onto the Lightning Network and start to be able to accept uh, Satoshis? So Obviously, the first thing we thought of was a custodial solution is the easiest on-ramp currently, but it still requires you to download some software or register an account. That is friction. Um, what we've done is create a custodial solution with a twist where um, we've made a wallet API that will actually generate what we're calling a virtual wallet tied to a social media account. And only the person who owns that social media account can use proof of identity through OAuth to access those funds that we are storing on their behalf. So let me uh, give you a demo from both sides of the spectrum of how this works. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm the user who already has uh, you know, a Lightning Wallet. And I basically just want to go and do a donation to someone on one of the uh, networks that we support. So we did eight integrations. As a nerd, I'm obviously going to go to GitHub first, and I want to <laughs> pick an open source project. Uh, let's just pick Halzeth here. Um, 
what we did just to be able to show this and convey easily, we created a uh, Chrome extension and we're just parsing the DOM on these eight social media platforms and injecting in a relevant uh, pay button. So I'm going to hit this donate button here. And essentially what we're doing, we're making a call to our virtual wallet API, passing the platform, so GitHub in this instance, and the user. And our wallet API is clever enough to understand, well, have we already got a wallet for this user? If so, that's cool, we'll respond. If not, we'll create it on their behalf and show a, a relevant QR code. So this is hooked into testnet. I'm gonna pay this, so let's copy this invoice. Uh, ping it into Zap. And send, and there we go. We've got confetti. The confetti took us the longest out of any feature of all of this. <laughs> <laughs> it was really important. So there we have it. We can essentially across any of those eight social media platforms, you know, Facebook uh, for friends or uh, maybe a, a Twitch streamer, we can just send donations to them without them having to do anything. Um, so let's imagine we've, uh, you know, done a bunch of donations now and let's see it from the perspective of this social media user using Bottle for the first time. So um, what I've done, it's quite sad. I've sent myself already uh, a lightning transaction against my Twitter account. So let's imagine I'm coming here now, uh, I've, I'm gonna auth and prove my ownership of that Twitter account with Bottle. So we're using OAuth, authenticating through as our bot matrix Twitter account. And this now is a little dash that's showing us, hey look, we've uh, had a thousand sats come through against our Twitter account. But we also support more social platforms. So uh, let's pick one here, uh, let's enable Reddit. So I'm going to do this one ahead of time. I'm going to um, off this against Bottle so I can actually grab my QR code and maybe send it to some friends or add it to a subreddit. Um, let's now click the QR code. And um, I will copy this invoice and we'll just see how these transactions appear uh, within the dash. Uh, let's give me a, a bunch of Satoshis there. And there we go. We can see this is now incremented in real time. Now, what's quite cool, um, previously we've worked uh, in our B2B days uh, with businesses who do a lot of advertising across social media. So we wanted to try and have a one-to-one -one relationship with the virtual wallets we're creating against each social platform. So someone like Oxfam, for example, could do some advertising across various social platforms and understand where they get the most engagement from people who use cryptocurrency. Now, sticking to that, um, one of the big barriers for uh, you know, um, charities is under 18s being able to donate because they don't have a credit card or they can't enter into a credit relationship for monthly payments. Uh, with Bottle, um, they would be able to do this and ad hoc across any advert or any tweet or any post across social media. Um, it'd be super easy for the user. Sorry, that's the time. No worries. I think we got through most of it there. I, I hope that kind of all made sense. Yeah, do we have any questions from our judges? Also, uh, comment to the judges, please move to the second tab in the Excel sheet uh, to do your scoring. Very cool um, app, very cool use case. It looks very easy to use, which I love to see. <clears throat> you are implicitly, though, relying on the security of all of these secondary OAuth platforms that you're using for authentication, which are mostly the social platforms that are kind of notorious for how easy it is to compromise access to those accounts. How, how I guess, in the future, are you thinking about maybe um, securing that a little bit more? 100%, you know, it's a great point. For us, really, this um, is just kind of like a gentle on-ramp for these people, for microtransactions, to try and get them used to uh, interoperating with crypto and, and working with the Lightning Network. But actually, in our wallet API, we've made provision where people would actually be able to hook in their own nodes against each social platform. So actually we could uh, perform a non-custodial solution. Um, definitely something we want to build, but it was out of the scope for uh, these 48 hours. But that's how we see this kind of long-term and then helping really secure the platform. Man, it's super impressive what you've uh, built in the last 48 hours. I mean, man, you, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so ghost in the machine, double fingers going on there. Um, 
really, really awesome. I, I love the fact that uh, you know you can you don't really need to know the know the person or that's donating. You don't need any sort of interaction there. You can just literally get anonymous payments, which is super nice. And um, uh, I, it would be cool to also see the ability for people to then use this as like the ultimate tip bot where you can then, if you've already got some sats there and you haven't set up, you could just sort of, you know, send some of what you've got to someone else and, and move it forward. That'd be nice too. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Look, we we've actually had so much fun building this. We've we've dropped what we had planned for the rest of this month. We're actually going to keep making this app. We actually want to make it happen. It's been my mission to get my mum to finally use crypto, and we think <laughs> finally how I'm going to unlock her to use cryptocurrency. Yeah, which platform do you think uh, do you think will be the most? I mean, I think Twitter is probably Twitter and Reddit. Twitter's a classic one, absolutely. Uh, I think one where maybe you're un unlocking paid content could be quite interesting. So maybe YouTube uh, and also Twitch um, could be quite interesting. Uh, and then the virality of maybe you know doing payments to Facebook friends uh, could be an interesting one too. So yeah, we're really kind of we're super intrigued to know like you know if users really do start taking this up, like which platform will perform best. Hmm. And and in terms of security of uh, your infrastructure um, is there any sort of multi-sig things you can look at in terms of OAuth I'm not sure yeah it's definitely something we're going to look into um, we've done some fancy stuff in the back end with uh, private keys using like um, uh, vault within AWS again you know just trying to do something that allowed us to, to turn this around in 48 hours but uh, one of our guys is a real kind of security uh, nerd, so you know he can't wait to to start hardening this up. Great. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. It'd be really neat to see if you were able to uh, basically make the, uh, the the donations to yourself unspendable unless they were able to prove their authentication. That way, uh, I mean, I, I think that would have a, a really powerful impact because then you can basically say, hey, "We can't steal your funds, but we are custodial." I don't know how you would do it, but that would be really cool. I think. Hundred percent. Yeah, we. That's definitely what we want to aim for. Uh, yeah, we want people to feel like their funds are secure in this and, you know, we want to make, we want them, it's, we're incentivized, right, to get those users into our platform and start using it. You know, the more users, the better, the more people using Lightning, the, the better for everyone. Yeah, one quick question is, how do you notify the person that they received a donation? Brilliant question. Um, so one of the things we thought uh, where uh, the QR thing, once you pay and it spins, and the confetti comes down, we thought we could have a little box there where um, you could send a tweet to them or you know, paste their email if you knew them or you know, if there's a messaging platform through one of these uh, social platforms, we could hook into that. So uh, we definitely wanna put effort into making sure that they're aware that these funds are accruing rather than just being completely unknown and then after you know, six months, they bill up you know, half a Bitcoin or something. So uh, yeah, I, I think giving people easy ways to also message through these social platforms will really help with the virality of the product too. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for uh, coming on. Uh, judges, if you guys can take a moment and score your projects. And then, um, yeah, let's see. The next person that I see is Sensei Chat. So. Hello. You're on. Hey, good to hear from you. So. Yeah, let's get you started up with your share screen. Give our judges, oh, yeah, that's the timer. Okay. I have the timer ready to go whenever you are. All right, let me get my screen up. Okay, you guys see the screen? Uh, yes, it's a Sensei and block stack. is that correct? Yep, that's correct, Perfect. okay. All right, guys, so what is Sensei Chat? Um, Sensei Chat brings uh, real-time market data, uh, blockchains, exchanges, and uh, data, data analysis bots uh, to social um, environments like uh, chat apps, um, you know, like Slack, Telegram, uh, Rocket Chat, Mattermost. And, uh, and so we're launching um, our beta on Rocket Chat, and that's what you guys are seeing right now. Um, so we integrated uh, block stack for um, the hackathon. Uh, we built a couple bots. Um, we open sourced some um, a lightning invoice watcher. 
Um, and I'll post a link to that in the chat and uh, let's just kind of get into it and I'll show you the workflow. So this is a block stack ID and we're getting into rocket chat. All right, and then this is general. This is just kind of a running demo. Um, and then when you come in, you get pinged by our admin sensei. Um, and then you just write a, a command to register. And then this generates a lightning invoice for you. And so one of my team members is paying that invoice right now. And boom, there you go. Our subscription uh, just got added. Um, and so we have all of these bots. Um, and now let's see, we can, yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. We can add a couple more bots here and we can do add fresh markets and let's do tape as well. Tape's a good one. So tape is one that we just recently, uh, built. We're really excited about this one. There you go. So we just paid that invoice. And now, um, let me, let's see, subscription. Okay. Great. So that's the subscription. And now here's a couple bots in progress. We have a price bot. So we can see, see the price of BTC to all stable coins. Boom. So there you go. There's your stable coins. Um, let's set a price alert. Uh, BTC USDT. What are we at? Okay, let's do five one three five. Let's see if that. Okay, so we created that. Now let's check out the tape on. Uh, oh, there you go. It triggered. That was a little close. Okay, let's <laughs> check out the tape on uh, on Binance. So we got BTC USDT. And we will do um, on and no filter on this. So we're starting, we're just getting a live feed of trades that are going on on Binance. Now that's a little noisy. So now we're gonna do tape. Uh, we'll do BTC USDT on. Let's filter it to only one Bitcoin trades, anything over a Bitcoin. So we'll start seeing that funnel through. Um, and while uh, that's going on, let's check the liquidity on some exchanges. So. We're using uh, some open source stuff for the liquidity. That's, uh, I think we tap into uh, CCXT, which is a great, uh, a great open source project that's going on in the community. Um, let's check out blockchain. So we have a blockchain bot and all of the data is coming out of our full node. So we're verifying all this data um, straight from our nodes. Um, you can watch address balances. Uh, you can see if a transaction uh, confirms. You can watch a pending one. We can watch the blockchain. We'll see when blocks mined. We'll watch ETH because it's a little bit quicker. Let's watch ETH on. Okay, so we'll start seeing blocks scroll through. And while we're doing that, we also aggregate um, visualizations. Um, so let's do some charts from crypto watch. All right, let's look at the mempool. See what's going on there. Okay, let's look at uh, the fees. Okay. Okay, and so these are all just Generating off of um, some screen screen caps out of Firefox. Um, and now, how about some heat maps? Uh, ooh, bummer. Nice try. <laughs> All right. So, do we Thank have you. any? Yeah, no, that was a great presentation. Um, really interactive. Uh, do we have yeah. any questions from our uh, judges? Yeah. Um, it, this looks very neat. Uh, very cool around paying the invoices. Just for my knowledge, a bit of background on how much you're actually, uh, how much you're using Blockstack in this. 
your I, I saw you authenticated into the Rock Chat instance with Blockstack. Are you using that purely as an authentication method? Or are you also using our kind of data backend? Um, what's that? No, like? no, just authentication. We just put it in for uh, user identity. Got it. And so. do you still need to use email for that, or are you just um, replacing the email field with the identity? Uh, yeah, I believe it's uh, I believe it's just replacing. So it just lets yeah. instead of us hold, managing users. Um, the last block check, or I'm Perfect. sorry, block set. Um, and then just just on the screen, you guys can see this is our lightning channel. This is, you know, it's it's monitoring all of the invoices that came through and kind of our channels and everything. So just want to highlight that. Okay, so every time you did a query, it paid a lightning invoice, is that correct? Uh, yeah, when we did those, yeah, we did those two, uh, those two invoices. So we have a, a subscription right here. And, uh, and we do our invoicing, how we uh, activate subscriptions is through C Lightning's uh, description label. So we use that metadata um, to, to set up the accounts. Um, and then this was when we added a bot. We added fresh markets and tape bot. And so it just comes on the back end in our admin side, um, just shoots through. Okay, so the only, the, so the Lightning Network payment was just for subscription and all the commands that you were typing in was just uh, kind of displaying like the API calls and the data you can receive through the subscription services? Yeah. Yes, yes, right. those, uh, those calls were kind of were kind of the, uh, yeah, what you're subscribing to. That's, it's a really nice way to get paid for developing good bots um, because, yeah, that's, that's kind of a sticking point. Yeah, and then this is our. Uh, let me see where the chat is. Um, but I'll post. I'll post a link. This is this is uh, some of the code that we open source. It's the Lightning Invoice Watcher. Can I ask how much of uh, you know? This is a, a very impressive project. How much of this was from this weekend? Uh, from this weekend was uh, was a few of these bots, like the tape bot, uh, the one that, that one that we displayed. Displayed this one, um, the block stack integration. Um, and then, yeah, and, and just polishing stuff up. This is the first time we showed any, anyone anything, so. Great, thanks. What, uh, where, where do you see the use cases for this um, uh, general so, public? Yeah, so, so what we've seen as the use case is um, in trading groups, uh, you'll be able to set up private servers with Rocket Chat. Um, and then kind of have pe people can trade together. Um, also just for your own personal trading, uh, you can manage funds with this, large funds. So really those are the, the main use cases. And then, um, you know, and then just if anyone that wants an information feed uh, built right into, uh, into any of their apps or chat apps that they're in all, the, all day. Uh, real quick, at this point, is there any sort of price discovery around if I'm going to query a new bot, how much I need to pay for that? Uh, really, the price discovery we've seen is uh, is kind of on uh, apps in, on your phone, like mobile phones. And so we see them range between, you know, a dollar and three dollars. Um, so I think that's kind of kind of where we're going to target on bots. Um, and then uh, the the exchange integrations, uh, we might charge a little bit more because for instance, with finance, um, you know, you can do some advanced order types that, uh, that you just can't do with the UI, like iceberg amounts. And so, um, so we'll be integrating with, you know, with a bunch of exchanges. And, uh, and I, think, I think we're looking at maybe like uh, mm -hmm. some DEXs as well. So hopefully this helps uh, some of the, the, the DEX uh, onboarding issues got it thanks yeah be cool to see spark swap in there yeah i know but yeah we were, th we, were, we were thinking about that when we uh when we watched the presentation <laughs> yeah and uh and it'd be good for the stable coins to uh to include gold which is which is what we're doing. <laughs> yeah yeah we thought about you as well we were talking about that yesterday um yeah it, it would be nice to see on slack as well in terms of general like more the mainstream uh, yeah, yeah, we did a uh, we did Rocket Chat just because it's open source, uh, you know that whole thing. Um, but yeah, we yeah. definitely intend to do uh, Telegram and Slack. It's just where most of the user bases 
And so those will definitely, those are definitely on our roadmap. Sweet. All right. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, if you would mind uh, stopping your screen share and the next person that I have on deck to share and present is Blockstack Lightning Club. All right. Well, I wonder, I wonder if they're going to build on Blockstack. What do you think, Zan? 50-50 at best. Yeah, dude. It's, it's kind of question because it says Lightning and then Blockstack. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Great. Yeah, I'll just unmute myself. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Let me know. Yes. Uh, just start whenever you're ready. Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, like the title says, we're taking the approach of enhancing the block stack decentral, decentralized identities um, that already exist. So um, the potential for decentralized identity is huge. Uh, it's... Um, allows people to log on using local credentials in a similar way to OAuth um, but without having to access a third party so you don't have to worry about tracking um, your web usage or anything like that. Um, so Blockstack I currently have um, you know, pioneers really in decentralized identity um, one of the things that we wanted to do was to use Lightning to manage the state of credentials. So uh, a decentralized identity, uh, identity document provides um, claims from an individual, i.e. a name, date of birth and things like that. Um, and you can get a third party to provide a proof against that claim and an important part of that process is to be able to revoke that um, that proof at any point in time so uh, that's what we're looking to do with lightning and so the current system for doing this is to have um, uh, two payments on a block on a blockchain with information in there and what we're looking to do is abstract that onto a state channel and so as long as the lightning channel is open the credential is valid as soon as the lightning channel is closed then that proof is no longer valid and the claim is revoked uh, we've had quite a few challenges along the way so it's not complete but if i show you um a quick view at a digital identity document. This is from Blockstack. Um, ID is from the demo. We tried to extract that ourselves as a basis for this, but weren't able to uh, Blockstack ID. So uh, this is kind of where we got up to. So we've got our initial sign in with Blockstack there, uh, which I can do now. So that's signed in for me so this is using my um, decentralized identity that's stored locally so this is signing me into Blockstack. it's got my user id up there uh, so the first thing that we'd want to do is to create our document so my name on there and, uh, and then I'd put my lightning node ID in, which I have. So that's my ID there. Okay, and the channel ID is going to be the ID, uh, sorry, the channel that I have open with a third party authorized or someone that's going to uh, provide a proof to my claim. And uh, that's so for the, yeah. 
So you see here I've got some channels open and I'm going to choose this person here who's going to put this credential is valid. I've open that up in the browser. So um, I'll quickly show you. It's built from a template. Cheers. Okay, so, so this is the blank template for the credential and you can see on there, there's one public key. When I've created the credential that has added the public key from my node and it's also added the short channel ID down there. Okay, that would then be submitted very quickly. would then send it to the issuer who would paste the DID document in there and that would return a signature which would be appended to the bottom in the proof section on the digital identifier. So yeah, uh, as you can see, it's not as pretty as some of the other um, presentations, but a uh, slightly different take on the, on the um, theme. Yeah, great. Thanks, Michael. Uh, do we have any questions from our uh, judges? Yeah, I guess one thing I was going to uh, ask would be uh, how could, so would, as, uh, would the developer who, uh, who has an OAuth integration be able to, to use this in a way? And, and like, what does is, what is the real use case look like outside of just a demo? Um, yes, so I mean, real life use cases. Um, we're not just talking about logins really. Um, it can be used for a variety of different things. For instance, a, um, an airline pilot who is contracted by various different airlines, he needs to keep up a certain amount of air hours, if you like, um, and that could be stored on uh, one of these credentials and revoked by a central authority. Um, if he doesn't keep up his hours, hours, likewise with a driver's license or something like that. Um, currently they're issued by paper. And if you've been um, excluded from driving, then you still have possession of that identity document. Um, this um, can be revoked at any time and verified cryptographically. I have a question. So is this, this basically uses, um, you can, you know, have any other kind of lightning peer validate your claim um, with their lightning node. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So we've got a, a lightning node in the background. We're using C lightning for this um, okay. because it's got yeah, uh, better facilities for um, searching the, the known kind of channels in the network. Um, why do you need to have, I guess, where does the, why do you need to have an open channel with the peer in order for them to um, validate this? So if you didn't have the open channel, then you, you could still have it validated, but that uh, credential would then be persistent. They wouldn't be able to revoke it. And the importance here is the ability to be able to revoke that proof. So the credential is only valid as long as that channel is open. I see. I see. Okay. So well, we've done this for the block stack ID, but there's a number of different DID schema that it can be bootstrapped to. Um, and as a bit of a bonus as well, it um, gives you a, an open channel to make lightning payments on as you wish. So it's kind of a two birds with one stone scenario, really. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, Michael. Uh, Thanks. Let's see. Um, Spike, are you on the channel at all? Uh, this is a Berlin team, and uh, it's I guess it's pretty late there. If you're on the channel, I'd love for you guys to go next. No? Okay. Uh, maybe you can um, come up to the next one. Okay. How about... Local Lightning, you can go next. Cool. All right. Let me um, share my screen here. All right. 
All right, can you see that? Okay. Yes, sir. It says local lightning, lightning awesome. app built on block stack. Yes, sir. So I'm going to go ahead and begin here. Um, the um, general gist of this is that I wanted to build something similar to localbitcoins.com, um, but more decentralized. And um, of course, the advantage of using lightning instead of Bitcoin for um, peer to peer transfers. Um, is that it's it's instant, of course. So no more like you know. I I know local bitcoins has like kind of a custodio escrow account that they keep um, funds into, and then once those are verified, then they um, you know let people withdraw from that. Um, kind of wanted to remove all of that and not have to deal with holding funds or even data myself. Um, so let me log in. So on this side, on the right side, I'm logged in with um, a different block stack user. Um, on the left side here, I'll log in with another one just so I can kind of show like a peer-to-peer -peer, um, scenario, but let's see. All right, so, so yeah, so the main idea of this is really just posting listings and buying, or right, posting listings, whether they're selling listings or buying listings. Um, you know, part of this is, so I said that I'm using Blockstack and I'm using, um, the decentralized data storage that's kind of in block stack. So when I view someone's profile here, like I'm viewing this guy on the right, um, it shows all his listings, it shows all the information, his lightning node information, things like that. That's all hitting his own personal data storage that you know this person you know can store whatever, um, whether it's their own Azure bucket, um, S3 bucket, or their own server. This is their information. All this is stored on their account. It's not stored in a database anywhere else. Um, where I kind of the unfortunate part of um, you know the early stages of this is that um, you know decentralized data and stuff like that is the discovery aspect. Um, there's not a centralized place to look for um, information as, as it comes through. So, like for instance, I added this following list, and if we forgot about the listing page, you know I can go in and um, view manually and go here and say, oh, he has a listing. Let me go ahead and you know email him or interact with him. But otherwise, for discovery. You know, I have, um, you know, users that can post and it, this hits a centralized service. Um, so let me just go through it with fast because this is where the um, lightning comes into play here. So let's say I have uh, three Bitcoin that I want to sell. Um, another thing about local Bitcoins.com is I, you know, I'm pretty sure they take a fee of all of the transactions that happen anyways, because it goes into their custodial wallet. Um, with this, I'm just requiring um, paying for uh, the actual listing itself. So on this right side here, so because the user hasn't paid yet, we don't see the entry for Florida that he just had, but I can go into his personal, um, it's on the second page here, I can go into his personal storage bucket and it's already there. So this, this information is already saved into his S3 bucket or whatever he's hosting it. But meanwhile, over here, I can go ahead and pay this invoice. It goes through and um, there, there we go. We see Florida at the top there. If I go back to the listing page over here, we see Florida. Um, so this part of it is actually hitting a centralized, um, you know, uh, MongoDB instance. Um, and in order to post listing to that MongoDB instance, you have to pay an invoice. So that will go straight to me. Um, I thought about some interesting things where like maybe I have like whoever pays the most gets to the top of the listing But I think for now just having like a, a small Satoshi fee just to post on here just for discovery and it's also kind of interesting because it's also a, um, a Barrier entry, you know, you really need to be able to know how to set up a lightning node and send lightning payments If you're really going to try to buy and sell um, Bitcoin via lightning um, but yeah, I think I think that's pretty much the uh, just a bit here. Cool. Uh, thank you so much. That was really great. Do we have any uh, questions from our judges? Yeah. The, um, so escrow is done through the centralized service. Is that right? For local bitcoins.com. Not for, not for this. Um, not for this. The, the point. Uh, so that's a good question. Um, this is really just meant for discovery and, you know, getting people in touch with each other. 
the rest of the part, um, the rest of the actual interaction needs to happen, you know, live and in person. So, you know, I email this person, I say, Hey, let's meet up in New York. Um, and then, you know, we can interact that way. Well, while I was building this, I also thought like an interesting use case of lightning where let's say I'm going to meet this person later in the day. I have some time now though. I can go ahead and open up a channel with him and, and just, you know, have that full amount there ready to go. And then I just, you know, once we meet up in person, I get the cash, I hit the send invoice. Um, and that kind of happens off screen here. But um, yeah, I thought that was really interesting. So, you know, we, me and the other person does, don't have to worry about outbound and inbound capabilities. I'm just like, hey, meet me later here. Let's go ahead and set this up. So all we have to do is hit send and we're good to go once we meet up in person. Nice. Yeah, I, I actually kind of like it. It's uh, you're taking local bitcoins and then applying it to Lightning. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you could almost, I mean, even though it'd be a little bit centralized, but I mean, you could almost do this like facilitate, uh, you know, ATM type transactions too, right? Like if if I wanted to accept a payment from somebody who's not local, you know, you, you, well, I guess you would have to take the cash and move it, but never mind, that doesn't work. Yeah, the, while I was building this, you know, I, I built a block stack app before, and what I really love is not dealing with anyone's data, not having to worry about, you know, it, it, I feel like there's a lot of um, interesting uh, insights that law enforcement has when, when dealing with local Bitcoin itself. You know, we've heard of multiple arrests happening on there and things like that. Um, I really don't want to be hit with, um, you know, requests from law enforcement. Hey, can you pull up information about this guy, this guy, this guy? Well, no, I, you know, all I really do is store this information and that's really, you know, that's, you, you don't get any, you know, information from that. So like the less data I have, the less I feel better about the whole thing. Yeah, I, I was actually going to ask something along the same lines and you kind of just answered it, but just to confirm, um, I mean, obviously the, I'd imagine the big point of this is kind of aimed at, how local Bitcoins was forced to start doing KYC and AML or at least mm -hmm. KYC. And uh, yeah, I guess what, given the way that this is architected and the fact that users do own their data, I guess what do you see as your capability to even be asked to do something like KYC or your burden of that? Yeah, for sure. Um, and and that, that made me think a lot about, you know, why in the first place Bitcoin, uh, localbitcoins.com, you know, has to do that. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they're escrowing themselves and that they're, you know, receiving Bitcoin essentially and then sending it to the approved party later on. Um, you know, any of that payment processing stuff gets really fuzzy, I feel, with, with law enforcement and KYC and requests. So I think like, Really, this is no different than posting on Craigslist. Um, so I, you know, um, whether people are trying to sell cash on Craigslist or, you know, what gift cards or whatever, and I really just wanted something um, really simple. But yeah, I, I, you know, I, I would need to contact a lawyer for sure, I think. But, um, you know, I wouldn't want to get in the scenario where, um, you know, I have to worry about handling and KYC people. Really, I'm just taking information and I'm publishing it I'm, and then I'm stepping back and saying, okay, whatever the two peers do, you know, that's, that's on their own. For sure. Yeah. Craig, Craigslist lightning is a nice ring to it. <laughs> that's interesting. Um, yeah. Did you say you were from Berlin or you're in Berlin? Dallas. Oh, in Dallas. You're in Dallas. Yeah, I thought that's a, that's a, you're a long way from home with that accent, but so am I. No, what I was going to say is because local bitcoins uh, was sort of, first talked about here in room 77 uh, before it was created. And uh, yeah, I thought, so was the, the, there's a gentleman before us in Berlin, Andrew, you said something. Oh, about you know, uh, we've been trying to find, uh, he says he posted on our Slack and was like, oh, I can't, can't make it because I live in Berlin. And so I've been trying to reach uh -huh. out to him, but yeah, okay. we'll see, we'll see if we can get him on yeah. later. But this is very cool. I love it. Very nice. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Uh, let's go to the next presentation. I cannot uh, pronounce this name, but let's vote. Yes, it's Black's vote. Can you hear us? Hello? Yes. Okay. So why don't you set up your screen share and then uh, you can start whenever you're ready. Okay, do you see this? Yes, sir. 
Perfect. Perfect. So let me make it full screen. Okay. I think we can start. So, um, hi everyone. We're a team called Bless Vote, and we're a team of computer science researchers from University of Luxembourg. And actually, Bless is a Luxembourgish uh, word for lightning. And we are very happy to have this opportunity to explore Lightning Network and hack something on the on the weekend. Thank you for this opportunity. And our project is about voting with Blockstack plus Lightning. So we thought about um, a good social good as a topic of the hackathon so the most obvious social good is charitable giving and you help those in need you support your favorite causes by the problem can be that you're not sure where exactly your money goes and you maybe want to influence a little bit more as a donor uh, where your money goes and for example even there is a separate wikipedia category called charity scandals which shows that sometimes charity can go wrong so uh, if we want to improve this process, we want to give donors more influence, we propose a, 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 a protocol, a, um, an idea where you vote while you contribute. And you, your, the, weight, the weight of your vote is proportional to the amount that you donate. We can uh, think about different schemes and different formulas to incentivize large or small donors and automate fund distribution and so on. Of course, to in implement such idea, first of all, we need self-sovereign identity, a reliable, uh, a reliable one, and that's why we use Blockstack for identity and authentication. And for the voting itself, we use obviously Lightning. So putting this all together, we arrive at Blood's vote. And uh, here is how it basically looks like. We have a front end and we have a back end based on Node.js. So we have a voting engine here which talks via JRPC to our Lightning node, LND node, and via HTTP to the front end. So if I want to set up a vote, I, uh, I do that. And I, I, um, I come up with a list of options, and the user then can go on the website and click on their favorite option. And then the backend talks to the LND, and the Lightning network generates an invoice specifically for that vote. And the user pays this invoice, and the backend knows that the vote is being cast and uh, counts accordingly. And in order to prevent abuse, we use Blockstack here as an authentic authentication mechanism. So here is a demo scenario. We will show you a very quick demo. Of course, it's very uh, hackathon-ish and not uh, very polished. By uh, that's what we got. So uh, I'm already logged in with in Blockstack, and I will choose one option from a given list of options, um, and you will see that the tally will be uh, updated. So now I switch to, to another tab, and here we have our vote. So uh, yeah, for the sake of uh, simplicity, I'm here already logged in with my Blockstack account, and I'm presented with uh, the choice of which cryptocurrency is the coolest. Say I choose Bitcoin, and I have the QR code generated here and the Latin invoice generated here. And then we suppose that the user scans it and pays the invoice. And then we go on the C results page and we see that, say here, this vote has already been, um, been given. And then um, as the user um, actually pays the invoice, another, another vote appears here and we have the winner and so on and so forth. So basically, returning to, to the demo, um, your donation is your vote, and we can tally votes with different weights. We can give more influence to large or small donors. And of course, this is not only for charities. This can be uh, thought of as kind of generic voting framework with, for various kinds of elections. Uh, for example, for uh, like uh, elections that you have implemented for the hackathon, determine the winning teams at hackathon, and of course, many, many other other projects and uh, possible use cases. So here is our photo taken about 20 minutes ago after, after hacking along all the weekend. And uh, I hope you find our project interesting and um, we're happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much. That's pretty cool. Uh, you all look pretty fresh for uh, hacking uh, two days <laughs> in a row. <laughs> yeah. um, judges, do you guys have any comments or questions? Yeah, I guess, um, you know, the, the thing is with voting, it's always 
uh, having the problem of uh, people voting multiple times and things like this. Anything that uh, you can stop that attack? And here we are kind of uh, outsourcing this functionality to Blockstack and we just assume that Blockstack is a reliable authentication system which will prevent abuse. But uh, in the beginning of our two-day journey, we were tinkering some ideas of kind of uh, incorporating some kind of proof of work scheme for preventing civil attacks and we may think about that as well. But for now it's Blockstack. Nice. Got it. Um, very cool guys. Um, does this support, uh, I guess, some more uh, fancy voting frameworks, things like quadratic voting, things like that? Is there any reason why you couldn't implement that on, on your platform? Yeah, it's uh, actually, we also, we were thinking about this as a use case, but it's uh, a, bit, a little bit on a higher level. So what now we have more or less implemented is just telling the votes, but as long as votes have been cast and counted, then we can introduce any formula to actually determine the weights of the votes. And quadratic voting is one of the options that we consider to give, for example, uh, to encourage small uh, donors to donate, and, uh, or maybe to, uh, to encourage large donors to donate depending on the goals of the charity. So this is obviously uh, a possibility. Got it. Can I see your uh, slide number 11? Uh, yep. OK, cool. Yeah. Cool. So one question why uh, I was looking at that was uh, when when you were building it, was the idea that this would be something that you would run as like a centralized service, or you would offer it for anyone to be able to run and, and do like private voting, or what was your what was your kind of uh, your your problem statement? I guess. Uh, I guess it's the. Um, I'll hand it over to my colleague. Two seconds, please. Sure, okay. sure. Uh, so basically, uh, user is voting from Blockstack application, and it's decentralized. Uh, but the voting agenda and the subject of the voting is attached to a server. So it requires server. Uh, server specifies. So for specific voting, you create a server. So yeah. it's Node.js server right now. So I would say that anyone who wants to set up a vote can um, can uh, fire up their own server, which will communicate with Blockstack and with Lightning. So that's kind of the use case. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So server is storing the voting uh, agenda and Lightning uh, daemon, uh, but the user is using it from Blockstack application. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much. Next, we have a lightning poll. Thank you. Bye. Very nice. So lightning poll, if you can uh, get your screen share going and then you can start whenever you're good to go. Or, yeah. Oh, you know, I don't know if you're Audio is ready. Uh, there it is. Now we hear you. OK. Great. Thank you so much. Sorry. Um, hi, everyone. I'm, uh, my name is Carla. I'm dialing in from South Africa. So please excuse me if the quality of the feed is a bit shocking. Um, our internet is not the world's greatest. Um, yeah, so I hope no one gets uh, too much deja vu from my presentation. I came up with a fairly similar idea to um, the guys in Blitz vote. Um, and my project that I've worked on in the last two days is something called Lightning Pole. And really where the idea started out is that I've been wanting to start uh, playing around with hold invoices for a while. Uh, which are lightning invoices where you can refund the person who's paid you. And yeah, thinking about that, I came to Lightning Poll, which is a poll where you can pay to vote, as in the previous presentation, uh, with the added functionality that you can refund certain users based on the outcome of your poll. Um, so I'm just going to 
start off a demo. So the use case um, I thought of for this was pretty much more of a social media, slightly less serious use case. Um, for example, your favorite YouTuber says, um, oh, do you want me to post a video about cats and dogs or dogs and you vote for dogs, but then the majority of people want to see a cat video. You can actually then be refunded your Satoshis because that content producer is not going to be making the thing that you voted for. So if I plug in, am I going to stuff up this, this demo, the little typo, so that's not a great start. As the question for my poll, I decide I want 20 Satoshis per vote. I set an expiry on my vote. That's quite important uh, for a reason I'll explain now. And then a payout invoice. So this is for the person who is um, creating the poll. You need to be able to be paid somehow. I thought it would be preferable to keep it anonymous and not usernames and emails. So what you need to do as a poll creator is jump into your wallet, or in my case, my command line, and generate an invoice. Uh, you'll notice this invoice has no amount because you obviously don't know how many people are going to be paying your poll. And you don't want to be in the case where you create 100 Satoshi invoice, but you actually only need to be paid 40 Satoshis because then it can't be paid out. Um, and the other thing is it needs to have quite a big expiry. So I've said it needs to be an hour more than your poll's expiry. Because we don't have user data, you don't want to be in the case where you can't pay someone out. Um, oh, sorry. Cool. And the next thing you can choose is a refund strategy. So you can repay the most popular vote, you can repay the least popular vote, you can repay everybody or repay nobody if you're feeling selfish. And um, obviously there are a whole bunch of other options you could put in here, but I've just kept it simple for the hackathon. So I'm going to choose repay majority and add options yes and no. You can also add more than one option if you like and create my poll. Cool. So now I'm just going to demo what voting would look like. So for first vote, I'm going to vote yes, since I already made one typo and copy pasted the wrong thing. And then this would be a user who's wanting to vote yes. They jump into their wallet or their um, terminal and pay that invoice. The reason I'm in terminal is that HODL invoices hang, as you can see over here, which I learned this hackathon uh, when you send them. Uh, so I'm just going to do one or two more votes, same process, copy your invoice and pay it. And then I've also got, you can see in the description for the invoice, I've just added uh, what you are voting for, just in case you've pressed the wrong thing. And just to tip it into one direction, I will vote yes on one more thing. Cool, so now we are in the situation where the yeses are in the majority uh, to the noes, and then in a regular use case, you would sit with this poll and wait for it to expire, but because we are in a demo, I'm gonna force close, which is just me telling my back end to expire it immediately and settle out to the person creating the poll and the voters. Um, so if I force close it here, and I pop into my terminal, you can see the person that voted yes and was in the majority did not end up paying the invoice. This is what you get from l d when you don't pay. The person who voted no, as much as they have faith in me not screwing this up, they have unfortunately had to pay. And we can see they've paid 20 sacks. And then the other person who did not believe in me also didn't pay. And then I can just see one more thing. I go, this is me, the creator of the poll. If I look at my invoice, I can see it's been settled and I got 20 Satoshis. Cool, thanks so much everyone. I have a quick question yeah, for you. Cool. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, so yeah, um, is the, the poll creator, like the that server that you set up, does that, um, have sort of a separate set of invoices uh, for the user, or are you just like holding on to that invoice and then forwarding it at the end of at, when when the poll closes? Like, is it? Are, I guess is that um, central server taking custody of the funds and then creating a new payment to the poll creator? Uh, yes, it would have to do that. Okay. So it receives 
all of those hold invoices, um, which aren't actually, um, you don't actually have, well, have those funds until you settle them, right. which only happens at the end of the poll. So as the poll closes, you release back to users and then you pay out that one invoice to, okay. um, to the creator. So it is custodial for a brief period of time. Um, right. An improvement I'd really like to make would be plug in your own node using something right. like LND and then it's not custodial. Awesome. This is really cool. Yeah, it's cool, right? I think you could also um, sort of mod it to make a nice prediction market as well. Sort of the payouts okay. would be the, based on odds or something. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking as well, right? Because I mean, that's I was really interested to see why you chose to have a payout option because that's kind of like uh, I think it's a really interesting thing to bring in because, like you said, you could you could uh, you could do a lot of interesting things with that. No, well, yeah, it definitely does have sort of a, a king of the hill feeling where, um, and I think that could also be made really interesting if you don't expose the results until you voted. So it's a little, a little less known, um, but two days is not a lot of time to think about all the possibilities. Can people look at the channel or the node, the final node? No, they can't, can't, can't you can't really. Uh, well, you can get the pub key of the node, but you can't get anything else. Yeah. Yeah, you know, even from a content content creator perspective, I'm like, whoa, um, yeah, I want to make. I'm choosing cha uh, cat or dog vids, and um, <laughs> you know, if the cat the cat video wins out, then everyone who won a dog video is like, you know, I, I want my money back, right? Like, so <laughs> I think that kind of makes sense, um, and I feel like, yeah, I would actually use this. So that's that's pretty cool. Great job, Carlo. All yeah, right. Thank you. Uh, next, we what, did you have anything else, or are we good to go? No, thanks. Okay. Good to go. Next, we have up airy tip. Are you on here, airy tip? Yes, we're here. Yeah. Hear okay, us? great. Awesome. It's very clear. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna sh start sharing the um, screen. Screen. Here. Great. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, yeah, we can start now. Uh, we are. Um, this, my, my name is Joe uh, Jen. This is Joe. Hello, I'm Joe. Um, we are believing technologies um, based in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, we were doing crypto mining in early 2017s, and since um, end of last year, we were working on the um, crypto. Um, buy and sell BTM machines, virtual BTM machines running on Lightning, uh, Lightning Network. And this is the machine that we, um, we built. Um, and the project for this hackathon is uh, Arid Tips. It's basically, um, we created a social content tipping systems for the um, content creators. Um, the problem that we, has, uh, we try to solve is, um, right now in the internet, lots of people publish their good articles um, for free for people to read. Um, as a reader, we're going to read those um, contents, um, articles. Um, even when we really like it, we, are uh, we want to show our appreciation. There's no way we can um, do um, stuff right now. Because even we send a $1 credit card bill, um, like transaction to them, it costs a lot. But uh, using Lightning, there's, um, um, Lightning can, you can just fraction a li little bit of months to tip in the content creators, like 1,000 Satoshi, 100 Satoshi, even 10 Satoshis. So um, yeah, let's um, just do a quick demo here. Yeah. So we're currently we're building like a plugin, so this can be plugged into any existing platform, for example, on WordPress. We're doing demo actually on Wikipedia. So um, yeah, this is uh, Wikipedia about the um, Lightning Network. So, we, um, so all we needed to just uh, inject a couple lines of JavaScript into the web page. So um, right now I'm a reader um, reading this uh, Lightning Network and uh, it, um, Drew is the content creator. And, I'm the creator, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it shows a lot of information to us, uh, to me. Uh, I really appreciate this. And then the <clears throat> plugin, will detect that, oh, you read a lot about this. Would you like to tip the writer? 
Um, yes, I, I really like it. So I was like, choose an excellent thousand uh, Satoshi and send the tips. Thank you, Jen. Very generous. <laughs> so, um, and the system will tell me that um, I send a um, 1,000 Satoshi to the writer. I'm not sure who is this. Yeah, also it sent uh, me uh, uh, a text message. So I, I received a 1,000 Satoshi from my fans. Yeah. Yeah, so the backend, we build a backend that connects to this interface and the send the um, Satoshi to a light, uh, content creators Lightning Network, um, uh, Lightning Note. So the one difference, like uh, we actually uh, create those invoices on the fly. So, so even like users, they don't need even to scan the QR code. Yeah, yeah just we really want to lower the barrier that people uh, want to tip in the good articles, um, like by reduce the amount of the tipping, because like 10 Satoshi, it will be less than one cent. People don't mind tipping the good articles. Um, but for the content creator, they can start accumulate the, um, the um, Bitcoins. And when they, well, uh, and also we customize the wallet that shows this, um, tra those transactions for the, um, for the people. So I'm not sure if you guys can so, see. So uh, this the wallet we built for our BTM project, but we customize the UI which can show uh, the tipping balance in this wallet. So every transaction or every uh, reward the creator uh, collects will show in this wallet, yeah. Yeah, and then furthermore, if they want to um, cash out, um, if they um, accumulate enough Bitcoins, they want to cash out for, uh, for their um, bill. So they can go to our machines. <laughs> yes. I just want to um, show you. Yeah, okay. We want to show you guys. So uh, basically, uh, uh, I, if like the uh, creator want to cash out something by grocery, for example, uh, they can just uh, go to the machine and say I will sell twenty dollar and continue. Just shows the QR code for lighting. Then uh, we do a sell. You can just scan. Okay, I will send the Bitcoin while lighting. So you basically um, exchange the um, Bitcoin to fiat on the back end and then okay. um, cash out the, um, the bill right away. Yeah, the, the bill right away. Thanks, <laughs> Lightning. Nice. Um, yeah, that's our um, um, uh, projects. Well, the, this part is not um, what we've done for the, for the past 24 hours, um, but the, the tipping system and, the, um, and the, how we have set up the routes uh, notes to um, send to the content creator is, for the, um, is part of this hackathon. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Got it. Thank you so much. You guys pointed that out. That's, uh, that's really cool. You, so you took the hackathon to, to kind of like hack away at your own project, but you've isolated it down to a small feature, so that's really cool. Yeah. yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks for uh, organizing this kind of amazing event. So we have the opportunity actually to uh, make some noise in the, in the community and uh, know more people, know more friends, build some partnership, which uh, we're, yeah. we're looking for, yeah. But the tipping system is really, um, we see the um, like a potential that's helping content creators to um, like a studying, getting rewards for, um, before there's a free, right? But right now they can get some rewards from the, uh, yeah. by using Lightning. To show our appreciation. Well, yeah, you can imagine that we build this into a plugin for like a WordPress and everybody can start using it um, and it's receiving rewards. And then we, the idea we want to say is people can just um, like uh, using credit card to buy $1 or $2 Satoshi, um, 100,000 Satoshis. So then you can start using on the platform to tip in people. They don't need to buy a lot because um, uh, Lightning Bitcoins can really just um, giving them the opportunity to tip in a little amount of bitcoins. Yeah, that's the power of micro payment. Like yeah, a, so from, from, our, from our perspective, yeah, mm -hmm. this is something like other payment system cannot do, and only can be done while Lightning Network. Yeah, it's like a micro tipping system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So does this require that the content creator have a Lightning node set up, um, and does it sort of integrate with their existing Lightning node, or is this a, a custodial Lightning node that you have set up on behalf of the creator? Yeah. Um, so for now, yeah, this is a custodian system. So we basically, uh, we're running Lightning nodes on Kubernetes. So we're currently we uh, provision like node for every user in our platform. But in the, in the future, we're gonna 
uh, for example, the Lightning Network itself become more mature, we're gonna make it as decentralized as much as possible. Now, just like a, for a user experience perspective, removed friction, we are building the custodian solution. Yeah. Okay. So when people um, sign up their um, wallets, then we will um, assign a note to the wallet so they have dedicated notes for their own yeah. um, wallet. But we're prepared to be centralized uh, like in any, yeah, as soon as possible, as long as the, this feature ready. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the dreams for me when I got into Bitcoin was definitely that the internet is missing microtransaction, is missing you know everything <clears throat> being a minimum of dollar 99 or whatever it is it's just pathetic and uh yeah. and terrible uh, especially for countries where that's a lot of money and uh so the wider use case i think it's really cool uh for uh, lots of lots of things and content creators as well the one thing i i, I don't like about micro tipping people for stuff is that some people, when they send one Satoshi, it's almost, and I think this is probably a cultural thing, but it's almost like throwing a busker one cent in the bush next to him. <laughs> so, go get, you know, go get it. It's kind of offensive almost. And uh, it's, it's funny that, but, um, but yeah, generally I really love the idea and I think uh, it's got so many use cases, especially, and uh, as well for, so strangely for uh, you know machine to machine of course micro payments is great on the internet but for tipping and content creators good stuff and i love the reveal at the end with the with the money coming up uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks Amazon. Yeah. yeah nice well, like, nice sales yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> josh i'll take your satoshis anytime you want you send them my way as small <laughs> right. as possible yeah <laughs> all right all right well thank you guys so much uh next we have, uh, oh, there it is, uh, Tip Hub. Oh, actually, you know what? Fiat Jeff just joined, and we're going to actually have him uh, come in. Uh, his project is Somebody Make This. So are you ready? Can you hear us? Uh, I don't know how to share my screen. Okay. The, uh, the for that. Yeah, at the middle of your Zoom screen should be a square and an arrow pointing up and it says underneath this it's, oh, it should yeah. say share all right okay and i don't know if i'm ready maybe you should go to the You're other someone else okay no <laughs> yeah. worries yeah that's it get it get acclimated no worries okay let's go to uh tip hub no no wait lens sorry lens are you ready yep oh. you hear me <clears throat> yeah somebody make this i think you're screen sharing or is that lens? Yeah, it's me. Uh, Sorry. Uh, I'll do it. Turn that off. Sorry. There you go. Uh, you guys can hear me? See my screen? We all good? Yep. That's right. Alrighty. Uh, where am I over here? Okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, what's up, guys? Um, <clears throat> Here I've got a uh, lightning lens. So what we've got is a Chrome extension for connecting GitHub projects to the lightning network. Um, lens is a, a bit of a play here on uh, electromagnetic induction uh, to just nerd out a little bit. Um, the idea is, I mean, at a high level, uh, current passing through, or, or rather elect electricity passing through a current, you know, these lightning analogies, right? Uh, lightning Jewel also inspired us a little bit. Um, you have this idea of magnetic flux is also having an effect here. And so basically what I realized is that software powers the world and um, a, a software platform like GitHub uh, synergizing with the internet of money uh, just seems to make sense. And I've uh, been doing just a lot of product ideation. I didn't uh, get as much done as I would have liked to demo here, um, but I'll sort of run through it and then just make sure I'm getting the concepts across uh, as clearly as possible. But um, Lightning Jewel, I like what they're doing with, uh, you know, having it right in the browser, Chrome extension wise, making it as easy as possible to spin up or connect your Lightning node uh, and make payments. Um, but I want to drive some of that transaction activity towards GitHub projects. Uh, I'm a software engineer, obviously, we're all here. We, we use this platform, there's lots of collaboration tools, and I think there's something there, uh, especially in the sense that, um, you know, obviously there's value in, in just the knowledge that engineers, designers, developers, people collaborating on GitHub, um, there's value there and 
there's not quite a framework to maybe compensate some people for that. Um, so what I'll get into as I get into the demo um, is the importance of, of the project owners sort of guiding this uh, instead of it just being kind of just anarchistic chaos in an open source project and like nobody really is in charge. There's, there's always a project leader and things just get done better that way. Um, but the other side of this that sort of <clears throat> really got me going uh, from the Lightning Network angle is um, the idea of inbound capacity. And I kind of like, once I started opening up channels, I was like, great, okay, you know, I'll load this up, I'll load, you know, start loading Bitcoin up here, but like, uh, I can't really receive anything just yet. You need, you need inbound capacity. And so uh, there's some services out there that's just like, you know, you connect to me, I'll connect to you. Um, obviously, you can get some inbound capacity by spending through your channel. Uh, and so I think I want to bring that idea more into just collaboration on a GitHub project and um, just have people connect, creating channels um, directly at a project. So like you can actually just be, you know, more or less participating in the activity on a GitHub project. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, introduction I wanted to get through here. There's, there's a bit of a bounty system, but again, these are just kind of features that I didn't have time to really fully flesh out. Um, but I think at a high level, um, you know, I got across what, what the idea is here. And so uh, it's a Chrome extension and um, here I just have a regular GitHub repo. Um, it got, you, you're gonna authenticate with GitHub. And so just like that, that's all, you know, that's the, one of the functional pieces of this. And so um, what I'll, before I get too much further in here, I want to just demonstrate also this idea of product ownership because um, I do have, uh, you know, a check to make sure that um, you are the product owner before you actually sort of activate uh, your projects uh, to the Lightning Network. Uh, and so obviously I can't, um, you know, I can't just uh, establish, uh, I, I can't connect this to the network unless I'm the owner uh, or at least at least have admin rights. And so um, that's going to be important just because as, as, you know, as these, some of these features that I want to implement, um, the, the, oh, the leader of the product definitely has some say in like, you know, what kind of pull requests get merged in, how many, how much, con how much, uh, how important a certain contribution is by, from a particular person. So um, there is that uh, dimension there. And so here uh, it's basically asking you, you know, to open up a channel with uh, a lightning lens node. Um, and I think, because again, this is, the idea is here, here is to, to just open up channels and start like creating, you know, capacity that's tied to the system. And so um, I actually went through and uh, I don't know that a lot of this is really that that necessary generating the invoice and uh you know i'll run through what's going on under the hood uh in a little bit but um to get through this first phase is just to activate a channel um you know you would uh pay lightning invoice and um i'll skip through this part just to show you guys um this final piece on browsing issues right, i'll speed it up pretty quickly but um uh, the last thing on the DOM that I just wanted to show you uh, is when we're going into browsing issues, um, this idea of value flux. So you can add bounties to issues and, um, you know, of the whole collaboration element on how much, uh, actually how many Satoshis are going through these issues and what's being contributed to the project. And so again, at a high level, like as you're, if you're coming into any open source repo that you are interested in, um, you want to just, have, I want this to just sort of be like an, an environment, like a playground for people to open open channels with each other around a particular project. Um, so yeah, I think that's cool. about it. All right, uh, any questions from our judges? Yeah, so the bounty, so the, the owner of the project can add those bounties. Um, how do the bounties get paid out? Yeah, so, um, the, anyone can anyone can actually add a bounty, um, but how they actually get paid out is going to be through just a pull request system. Uh, there's going to be some element of claiming, like you want you you want to know who's sort of committed to uh, resolving an issue in the first place, so that you know whether or not to put put in time on it. Um, but there is there's just going to be a resolution system that that really is focused on the project leader to determine you know if two people did contribute to an issue. And they're closing it out. You know what's the what's the fairest split there? And so, 
what I want the system to do is kind of just show, all right, well, you know, this person, you know, did a whole spec beforehand, uh, but this other person did most of the code, you know, how, what's the, what's the fairest split there. So ultimately it's down to the project leader. Cool. Wow. So, so you, could not, you could now have GitHub exit scams where <laughs> people are just, oh, I'm out of, no, it's, I, I really love this idea. I love, I love that we could fund uh, open source projects and uh, have that as a mechanism to incentivize people more than just passion for the project. Um, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, I'm definitely with you there. Um, but I do think this, I see this a little bit more as, you know, you can, you can get compensated for the work that you do on a project. But I think the idea would really be to maybe give some of that right back into, you know, other contributors. So like you're receiving capacity again, if you, if you kind of earn through that, then just spend back through the channel. Uh, instead of closing it out because this is actually a project that you're that you actually care about so i mean i think that's the idea yeah that's lovely I, and th the inbound receiving capacity is is uh kind of annoying i must say so it's nice to it's a nice problem to solve yeah I agree. yeah i wanted to jump in on this one uh i think it's really interesting i've actually looked at doing some similar stuff so uh what would be really cool i think is if you were able to somehow uh make sure that like, so just because someone creates a PR and you, and you merge it uh, and you pay that bounty, that doesn't mean it's gonna work, right? And so it'd be really cool, I think, if you spend some extra time also thinking about how could you like secure the, the person who's paying out the bounty that what they're paying, you know, is, uh, it has some time or something that it'll like actually make it to a release. I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah, and I mean, that's typically, I mean, if you've ever gone through a, a pull request review, like, you know, it's a bit of a process, you write the code, and honestly, the maintainers may have, you know, a thing or two to tell you before, uh, you know, merging it in. There might be a better way to do something. There might be, you know, some testing implications that you didn't think about. And so, like, there is a conversation that goes on uh, during a pull request review. So, um, you know, having some, some capacity shift back and forth uh, in that process, I think, would be interesting to see. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, like, how do you incentivize the developer to start on it knowing that he could get that bounty, you know? Right. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for presenting. Cool. Uh, I guess. Yeah, the next person we have is TipHub. Are you guys around? You will have to unmute yourself. Should be on the bottom left. Oh, you started your screen. Um, you're still okay. muted. Are we good? There you go. Okay, cool. Yes. Sorry, guys. I'm new to computers. Um, <laughs> hey, so I'm Will. Uh, I worked with uh, my buddy Carl Dong on um, Tip Hub. Uh, let me just do a share screen here. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to practice this. Okay, cool. Uh, we all see in Tip Hub? Yes. Okay. Great. So um, it seems like a lot of people are interested in uh, this idea of uh, tipping in a way. Um, and so for the topic of uh, hack social, we decided to socialize hacking by trying to make it easier for people to contribute to open source projects with tips. So uh, with TipHub, we wanted to challenge ourselves to not have a user who wants to tip have to install anything or sign up for anything. Um, and we wanted to make it a, uh, a non-custodial solution um, so that money is going directly to uh, developers, especially since developers of all people probably already have Lightning Node set up and are pretty familiar with the setup process. Um, so let's go through here and see what it looks like. Uh, we're gonna connect with GitHub, but we have options for GitLab and uh, Blockstack as well. Sorry, I think the streaming is killing my network. If you want to, you can kill your video too and just do the screen share for now. Oh, is that, that is probably what's doing it. Hey, good looking out. Um, all right, so the first thing that you do uh, once you create your TipHub account 
is uh, you set up your node. So uh, as I said, uh, it's non-custodial. So you're going to punch in um, your gRPC endpoint. This is LND only at the moment. Uh, upload an invoice macaroon. So we don't have uh, the ability to do anything other than generate invoices for you. Uh, TLS cert, and then optionally, you can uh, provide your email if you want to get sent emails every time you get a tip. Uh, or if your node goes down, uh, we'll let you know. So once you get that going, uh, you see we don't have any tips yet. Um, but over here, the way that we uh, tried to avoid having users install anything was actually just embedding uh, inside of the readme.md uh, because you can do a little bit of markdown in there, or markup rather. Um, so here we have a tip button. Uh, you can customize it if you want. Got a couple of styles here. Uh, let's go for the dark one. Um, so once you've set that up, uh, you just pop over to your readme. Uh, here's Jewel. I'll go ahead and try to monetize this thing somehow. So I got my readme. Uh, I'm going to edit it. Go ahead and throw a link at the bottom here. Oh. So I'll just drop my markup in there. Go ahead and de-intent it so it doesn't get messed up. And uh, we're just going to commit this thing right away. So now when you hit my readme, um, you'll see this button down here. Uh, we include the user's pub key so that you can verify it before actually sending them money to make sure that, um, that you're sending it to the right person, that we're not doing anything nefarious on our end, generating fake invoices for our node. So you hit that, and you're popped back to our site where you can, um, you can either uh, attribute your donation, or you can just do it anonymously if you don't want to. Um, and then from here, you make a payment. Uh, as much as I would love to make the payment in Jewel, I cannot pay myself. Um, so I'm going to be uh, using Bitlum, which is a custodial extension. And we're going to go ahead and throw 100 sets my way. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, we made the payment. We got the warm, fuzzy feelings. If I were to go back to um, my tip page, we would see that, oh, wow, somebody uh, beat me to the punch with 10 sets. So thank you, uh, whoever did that. Um, so it's not enough just to do tips. Uh, we wanted to gamify it a little bit. Um, doing, doing the like kind of crazy earning money stuff uh, can sometimes be tough to find out. Uh, to, to get the incentive structure set up right. So in development, uh, didn't have time to push this up into production, but we actually have an embeddable leaderboard, uh, which will update. It's just a, a little SVG we generate on the back end, um, and it'll update in your readme as people tip uh, so they can compete for the top spot in your leaderboard. All right. Well, thank you so much, Will. Do we have any um, questions from our guests or our judges? I love yeah, the leaderboard cool. idea. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. You, yeah it, it's sort of these sort of little things add incentive for people to actually tip. See the name in lights. Yeah, uh, it would be great if we could also do links in there, but unfortunately, that's not something you can dynamically do in a in in something like a GitHub README. Yeah, really, really cool. To, <clears throat> excuse me, really cool to see. Well, um, yeah, hopefully we can get to a point where this is just like a default on every repo. No, it totally makes sense to want to incentivize this, um, and even if you don't set it up on a repo, uh, let me just jump back in for a second, I forgot to show off uh, one last thing, which is um, you, can, you can just look up people by username. So here, uh, I've connected my GitLab, GitHub, and my, uh, my block stack ID. Oh, that's very cool. So if you actually, it, and is that with um, the social proofs on the block stack ID, or how are you connecting those two? Yeah, yeah, so you go, you go through the standard flow 
um, and do the the social proof on the back end. Actually, I think I think I have a little bit of work to do on the social proof side. It looks like there's a missing Python library. So you guys got the uh, Ruby and Node all taken care of. That yeah, that that may be for sure. But uh, no, that that makes sense. Very cool. Anyway, you've seen this off flow a million times, so I will. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Man, great so, work. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, and you guys, you guys started this and uh, on Friday, and we're able to to get a lot of this out there. Yeah, yeah. No, this is all the last uh, forty eight hours, quite quite literally. Very using. impressive. Well, <laughs> yeah, that was very forty eight hours. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, I was going to ask the same thing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can uh, you can check the commit history. If there are any haters out there? <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate the player. Hate the game. All right, thank you so much, Will. Cool, and I um, just want to make sure I give shout outs to my man, Carl Dong, who helped me out with this. Um, I'm doing the presentation, but he deserves a lot of thanks. Awesome. awesome. All right, next we have uh, somebody make this. He's finally ready. All right. All right. Yeah. Let me share my screen now. Are you seeing this? Yes, sir. It says at hey. Okay. This is not my project. This is a little bit of background. Um, actually, I, I made this, but not not now. It's a it's a it's kind of uh, a, a pun on Ethereum. <laughs> it's it, it's a centralized smart contract. It's you 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 have a a little code, uh, a little bit of code in, written in Lua. And you can call methods on that code and alter the state, the, in, the internal state of the contract, somewhat like Ethereum, but, uh, and, and you can do lightning, lightning payments. You can deposit money to the contract and from the contract, you can pay external invoices. So then I, I wrote my, my project based on this. It's, it's, this is intended to be somewhat transparent, right? You order the, the call history of the contract, all the methods that were called are public and everybody, anyone can call. And so, so it's not, it's, it has some constraints on, on what you can build in this model. So I, I built something that is called somebody make this, and this is very ugly. And the idea is that people want things done and they don't want to do them themselves and no, no one is doing. There's this, this subreddit, uh, I think it's very famous, but a lot of people post stuff like, oh, oh I want something, I want something else. And most of, most of the things are idiot, I think, but some are good ideas, but this, I, I don't think anyone does this thing because it's just some random guy calling you to do it. So, so I wanted to monetize that. Like, uh, I want to, to to see something done, and other people also want that. So I, I'm I'm going to place a bounty on it. It's not a a bounty on a, a specific. It's kind of an, an inverted uh, flow than the, the tipping on GitHub. And there, there's also this this kind of things like Jimmy Song posted here. Oh, I'd like to, I'd love to see a study on whatever, and a lot of people like it. So maybe these people also want this. But no one is going to do this probably. However, if you give it, give them a little incentive, maybe they will. And there's also this other example. Uh, this this guy posted, oh, I have an idea, something that should be done. And a lot of people think this is a good idea, but I don't know how many, how much they would pay for seeing it done, right? And it's not like you're hiring someone to do it. The idea is that you just give a little incentive. And the person must be inclined to do it already. They just have a little extra incentive. So the idea is uh, here I have a, a demo thing, uh, a flying toaster. Okay, I will, I will create a new, and place a new bounty on, on something else. And my navigation is broken, so I, I will use this thing here. Uh, somebody make this. Uh, what I want to see done, I want to see uh, a, a place and a lightning app 
YouTube that allows betting on Go games. And I would pay 1,000 satoshis. This I have a, this, this little good adjudicator this. Uh, by default, it's yourself. You decide if the person who claimed to have done what you propose, if you decide if, if they have done it in the way you, you like it or not. But you can put other people here, right? So, uh, other third parties that will judge this for you or uh, along with you. So, it makes more, gives more safety to the makers. And here I write a long description describing what I want or not. So I'm just placing this. So, and this I, I could have integrated this with block stack, but I integrated this with key base for identities because I don't, I didn't have time to learn block stack how it works. So the idea is because everything on Ethereum is, you don't have logins and nothing else like that. And I, I to, to authenticate myself, I, I'll, Get this ID. There's the, the idea of the call I made on the on the on the background, and I signed that with my uh, PGP public key on Keybase. So I signed this here. That my password here. Some people say this is very unsafe, but I don't care. And I put I paste my signature here, and so. Um, I update because I have a strange flow where I have to update the, the call I'm making with the signature. And finally, I get an invoice. I'm going to paste the invoice here using this extension. Okay, the invoice was paid. I click here and then I click here again to place the bounty for a lightning app that I was betting on Go games. And now, Someone can browse this page and see this. Oh, I want to. I want to make this. So I'm just showing my other thing I did, which is also another Ethereum contract based thing. Is I like an app that allows you to bet and go games. Wow. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm I've announced here that I've completed this bounty. I put I write this thing here, uh, the link to the site, and. And my comments, which can be left empty. And then again, I have to authenticate because I have to prove I did that. Like, so if I'm posting a GitHub repo, uh, I can authenticate with Keybase and then Keybase will point to my, Git, uh, my GitHub repo. So I don't, it is sound because I have to stop. Okay. Again, um, this is a very tiring, tiring process, I know. And oh. go back there, paste my signature, update the call, get a lightning device, pay the lightning device. And this is this is another person that is doing it, not me, right? But, but in this case it's it's me. Yeah. <laughs> So I posted that I have I have completed this this bounty, and then the person who who, vote, who posted it or the other adjudicators can vote against or for, and if the the votes reach a majority, the the call is settled. Other people can come here and and post a, another bounty on the same thing while while this is pending. So let's let's see um, a vote for, and then if All I right. am an adjudicator, you get the idea. Right. <laughs> yeah, sorry to cut you off. Uh, we have a few more presenters ready to go. So or, do we have any more um, questions? Sorry, I was just going to ask, why does the person who's submitting uh, completion of the bounty, why do they have to pay a lightning invoice? That's because it's how Ethereum works. Yeah, because to avoid spam, you have to pay at, at least one Satoshi. And then all you, all you can you can include more okay. Satoshis on there. Okay. And how does the person who completes the bounty, how do they get paid out? Or is that not part of the scope? That is, it's part of the scope. You, after you, your, your bounty is granted, it's granted to you, you get a, a balance on the contract. It's shown here. Right? And then you can go, which is another call to the Ethereum contract. Got it. Got it. Cool. Thanks.
So okay. the so if I understood correctly, the reason that they uh, you pay the bounty into the contract and then the the arbitrator or arbiter or whatever I can't remember what it was, they're the one that actually released the funds from the contract back into the Lightning Network or back into the, the payment. Yeah, yeah. The contract has. Let me show you the contract. Yeah. Uh, it has some code. It, ha it has some methods you can call, right? And each method can modify the internal state of the contract and pay invoices. Like if you if you submit a, a, a method call that has that passes the, the this code, right? It, if it, it matches the constraints defined in the code, the invoice gets paid. So you can withdraw if you submit. Uh, a request with a signature that proves you're a key-based user, whatever. And if you are not a key-based user or don't don't submit a valid signature, your your call fails. And if it, if it succeeds, there's a, a call here that pays a lightning invoice. Cool. All right. Cool. Thank you. Um, next, Very cool, man. We have uh, four more projects to get through, and then we'll leave about 20 minutes for voting. All right, so next we have Lightning Mapper. Billy Garrison. Hello. Somebody Hello. make this, you're gonna have to stop your screen share, please, so that uh, Billy Garrison can get on. Sorry. No worries. All right, there you go, Billy. Okay, can you hear me? Whenever you're ready. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, share my screen. Okay, can you see my uh, window? Uh, what I see is um, actually my video, or in now Josh's uh, face. Uh, that's okay. How about now? I see Lightning Mapper sign in. Perfect. Okay, good okay, to go. Great. Okay, so uh, the application that I built is uh, a way that users can look at satellite images uh, like Google Earth and then digitize some of the features from the map and get paid uh, through Lightning Network for doing those little tasks. And the, uh, the main motivation for doing this is based on the, uh, the social good theme for the hackathon. Um, there's uh, groups, humanitarian groups like uh, like the Red Cross, um, who frequently will get donated satellite imagery uh, when there's like a natural disaster, and they get volunteers to uh, to go through this imagery and look for buildings and roads, and and map them out. Um, here's just like a sample of the of an application that does that job. So. In the bottom left here, you can see there's some buildings, and so the user would have selected those buildings. And this just gives the people on the ground an idea of where there are actually uh, buildings you know, for people that need the help. Um, and right now, people just, they only do that because uh, you know it makes them feel good. There's no financial incentive for it. Um, so this is slightly different. Um, I'll, I'll walk through the demo now. Uh, I'll just add that this kind of framework could be used for any field that needs um, satellite imagery digitized. So it's not restricted to humanitarian groups, but that was kind of the use case that inspired this. So we sign in with the block stack at, at, uh, authentication, and the user's history. Um, their mapping history will be kind of linked to their block stack profile. Um, this isn't something that exists currently. This is kind of future work, but that way, uh, the more kind of mapping a user does, the more reliable and trustworthy their results will be, which we kind of used to prevent people from gaming the system. So we click Start Mapping. And on the right hand side here, we see there's three different um, locations that have jobs right now. So uh, we'll go to Venezuela to do some mapping. And it asks uh, to input an invoice without specifying the uh, no Satoshis. So I made one earlier from my tip in uh, profile. So I put the invoice in, I click begin mapping. 
that enables this toolbar on the side so that uh, I can digitize some of these features. So to start, I can draw a line up this road. And you can see on the right hand side, it keeps tally of how many features you've digitized and how much uh, Satoshis you've earned. So I'll just do, do a few buildings. You can also do like, it doesn't have to just be these square buildings. Do ground building. So just do a couple more buildings and then go through the cash out process. Um, kind of uh, this, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that this is kind of the end of the demo. Um, there's not actually any more interactivity, but we click cache out and that sends it to the server using C Lightning, which then pays out the invoice um, based on how many Satoshis you would tally. And so for future work, um, this would then kind of clear your total earned and um, you can kind of end your session or ideally there'd be a button so that you can, once you've digitized the whole area, you can zoom to a new area, digitize some more features to earn some more money. Um, I'll just see if that payment went through to my tip in account, which of course it didn't uh, because it's a demo. Um, so that might just be pending, I'm not sure, uh, or it might have failed. Um, but anyway, so that functionality is, is in the back in there with the C Lightning. Um, and yeah, so other than that, for the, uh, the future work, um, I think I've kind of covered everything, just kind of provide a bit more feedback after the user caches out and kind of wait uh, to get the confirmation of whether the payment was uh, settled or failed and, and let the user know. Um, and then work in the kind of block stack profile to, and then the reputation system to kind of prevent people from gaming, you know, just going in and drawing whatever polygons they want. So, uh, thanks. Yeah, that, right, that was going to be my, that was going to be my question was how do you prevent abuse of something like this? Um, you know, obviously when people are just doing it for, to make the world a better place, they're sort of not very likely to to abuse it. But when there's money involved, they might be. So yeah, how do you plan to prevent abuse of a platform like this? So yeah, that's a big part of where the uh, the block stack ID comes in. Um, through time, as people digitize more and more, they build up a bit of a reputation um, through like a kind of a ranking system, high score type thing. And from a more like technical rather than social reason. Um, each, uh, multiple users will digitize the same areas. And so you can kind of just take the median number of roads and number of buildings that were digitized. Um, so you're assuming that most people will be honest and correct. Um, and then, so say in this example, there was like five buildings and one road. Um, so if a user submits something with 10 roads, um, you might reject their proposal and hurt their reputation. Um, and then for accuracy, uh, there's some spatial data kind of averaging filters that you could use to, of all the valid submissions, kind of take the average of each of them. Yeah, you, you can kind of have a blind audit go over top of it too, right? Somebody else who would get paid uh, to go verify the data. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, uh, I think that's that the biggest issue is uh, definitely if someone just smashes down a heap of heap of CVs, uh, VC, is it CVs, yeah, uh, and uh, and gets paid out on that. But yeah, apart from that, I, yeah, I, I love the idea of someone else being able to verify that and have that as a game theoretical position to that problem. Cool. Well, thank you so much for presenting. Uh, thank you. Next, uh, next we have Spike. Spike, are you around? Ah, okay. Maybe let me check the chat real quick. Does anybody in the chat from uh, Spikes know? Okay. Um, next, we have Bolt Action. Bolt Action, are you around?
okay. Oh, there's an attendee. Just rose his hand. All right, CD, you were just officially made a panelist. You will be able to uh, share your screen and talk. Uh, which project are you, CD? Oh, I can tell the logo. That's uh... oh, that's Capitalist Dog. Bolt action done. <laughs> cool. Got audio now. Yes, sir. Uh, sh sharing your screen will be in the middle button and it'll say share. It's a rec green rectangle with the arrow shooting up. Boom, there it is. You can take a couple moments to get set up if you'd like, and then just let me know whenever you're good to go and then I'll start this timer. All right, are you almost ready to go? Uh, I thought my audio was working this entire time, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, there it is. Now All right. can hear you. Okay, so um, yeah, I don't have a lot to show. Just wanted to demo a um, concept I've been rolling around for a little bit. Um, had an incident yesterday, wasn't able to work on it too much, but um, my objective has been to create a decentralized social network specific for lightning um, and set up LND to communicate with that directly for certain pieces of data. Um, so what I threw together here was a um, yeah, little middleware that uploads uh, you know, data from your lightning node uh, to a decentralized gun database so that you can log in like you would with any other social network. and have fields available to you that can be updated directly by LMD. Um, now, the original case for this that I wanted to do was to store the backup string in here, now that the new multi-channel backup strings um, API is available. Um, so with GUN, your data lives where, pretty much wherever you access it. So a copy of this string will now exist in the node middleware. It'll also exist in this web browser, Chrome. Um, and if I were to open this in Firefox as well, uh, let's see. We have the data there as well. So now, were this the multi-channel backup string, this would exist in all three locations plus in the super peer. Uh, um, what GUN allows you to do, um, to communicate to all this data, basically is JSON through WebSocket and WebRTC. Um, and then a super peer aggregates that just in case a um, copy of your data went offline, handles encryption and all uh, that sort of thing. So um, with the middleware, uh, uploading your PK personal data, you can then share these fields across um, with other users and use this as a um, basically a layer three on top of Lightning uh, for alias data, um, invoice swapping, things of that nature. So I uh, don't have a lot to demo, it's just kind of a concept of thrown together um, and looking to um, keep building on it. Uh, that's really all I have for now. Okay, great. Does anybody else uh, have any questions for him? Yeah, I was wondering, what, what do you anticipate, you know, especially you mentioned the static channel backups. Um, like, what do you anticipate people using this for? Um, so, uh, realistically, I, I think of it kind of as a, um, basically an identity layer where you can share parts of your identity with, uh, you know, say merchants or other applications um, without 
um, really, you know, basically in just an open protocol format. So say I want to purchase something from you and share um, my physical address, but I don't want to make that part of my public profile. With Gun, I can then share that explicitly with you in an encrypted manner. Um, and where Lightning would come in is that same methodology that we're using to share that data could also share that, um, be the bootstrap layer for those invoices. Um, so I think it's a nice complementary technology with Lightning, which is um, why I've been kind of sandboxing it lately. Cool. cool. Right. So, so uh, part of what you were doing was uh, uh, trying to to back up your uh, the the channels, and you mentioned with a database. Is that does that mean it's completely uh, wherever it's stored, it's encrypted, and they can't actually see what they're storing? Or uh, so that depends on how you store the data. Obviously, um, you can have public fields, and you can have encrypted fields, basically. So, if you and I were to set up a chat. Um, it could be in a way that was public so other people could come in and see it or we can encrypt the messages between us um, by you know aggregating our public key and having based on that. Um, yeah, so a lot of that's inherent. Okay. Any more questions? All right, well thank you so much. Um, all right. Last but not least, we have Justin Moon, uh, I think you will be presenting Light GraphQL. And by the way, Justin, thank you so much for organizing that meetup out, out in Austin. I, uh, that's cool. We were trying to um, grab people to to do some, um, yeah, viewing parties. So it's cool that that happened. All right, I don't know. Okay, I gotta go to the attendees. Somebody's raising their hands. I have to make him a panelist. No, wait. Panelist, boom. Okay, there you go. Justin, I almost kicked you out. <laughs> My finger slipped and I was like, oh crap. But uh, I'm glad I didn't. Justin, you need to... Uh, check your audio because you're currently muted and I don't, we don't hear anything you're saying. Can you hear now? Yes, sir. There we go. I had uh, speakers. I'll just, I'll just go, with, oops, I'll just go with the computer audio. Uh, sorry, that was a little, little bottle of Topo Chico, the official drink of Austin, Texas there spilling on the desk, but we're all good. Uh, and now I got to I got to share. Yes, sir. Cool. Uh, now can you see? That's correct. I okay, see. Okay, so okay. Uh, I'll start. So my uh, project is uh, Lightning GraphQL. It's uh, it was inspired by this tweet, tweet by Rusty Russell, the maybe the lead developer, one of the two lead developers of uh, C Lightning. They were talking about why uh, LND has more. Uh, adoption amongst like app lap developers than uh, C Lightning. And he speculated like, uh, you know, maybe, you know, they, they have like a project where you use the uh, REST uh, HTTP query uh, uh, pattern to request data. And uh, he was saying oh, maybe someone should write uh, a GraphQL API would maybe be a better place to start. Uh, and so I, I ran with that. So for those of you who don't know, Graph, GraphQL is like a query language for, uh, like backend services that uh, was created by Facebook has been, you know, I think it's used now by Twitter or GitHub and many, many projects. It basically allows your front end, your app to uh, uh, kind of query your back end in a more granular and flexible manner, uh, especially if your bat, your data is uh, forms a graph. And so uh, for example, this is the uh, official, uh, uh, let me see if I can get that out of the way. Well, the official, uh, like one of the demos, it's the, the, uh, the topic is star Wars. So uh, this is just to give you a demo of understanding what GraphQL is, because it's kind of a developer product. So you can look at, uh, these are all the queries. You can see like, look for films, Star Wars films, right? And you can maybe look for uh, like characters is one of the, if I can find it. Somewhere is, is uh, or like here's list persons is what I was looking for. And so you can look for, uh, you know, maybe home world and you can see what, what, what the person's home world is. And so you can think of this in like a Bitcoin context, maybe you'd want to, 
query your invoices and right if you see if they're paid maybe see what the uh, the the channel that it was paid on and if you're given if you see a channel maybe you'd want to be able to also see like what the opening or closing transactions of that was from a, like a front-end developers perspective you want to be able to traverse these relationships in one query without having to send a bunch of queries back and forth so this is what it looks like when you query the Star Wars database you say I want all films and I want characters and then I want the name of the character right Luke Skywalker and then I want the home world, the name of the home world, this home world is Tatooine, and then the films. And here's the list of his films. So that's a little context about uh, what GraphQL is for those of you who don't know. And uh, so I'm gonna move over to my project. So this is a similar little UI. This is like a, uh, like a test bed to test the API. My, my product is like a backend uh, framework for building an API on top of your Lightning node. And so for example, you see all these queries I've been playing around with. Uh, so this editor allows me to basically query my, the, the product I built, the, the server, to, to respond to these queries. So for example, here's a query invoices uh, query, and I'll ask for the label, Bolt 11, payment hash, uh, status, this sort of thing. I'm just giving exactly what C-Lightning gives me. And if I run it, I see all these, these invoices, right? And so I'll, I'll show you the last one just because I, I want to, this is gonna change in the course of my demo. So here's the Bolt 11, uh, it's paid. The description was final demo. That was me testing whether my code works. Uh, and you can also like uh, parameterize them. So you can pull up queries. This is where it gets uh, interesting from a developer point of view. You can query for just expired invoices. And so here you'll see on the side, this is expired, expired, expired. Uh, and then maybe you, you want just paid invoices. Uh, and so now they're all paid, right? Paid, paid. So uh, if you look at the schema here, this query has a couple other things. It has some min sat, max sat, which I'm not gonna demo. Uh, and uh, another interesting thing is that I have some mutations here. Mutations is how you update your data. So uh, here's a create invoice mutation. It's just gonna go and create an invoice, and then it's going to, uh, you just have to pass in the millisatoshis. Uh, the, uh, oops, this is a little bit, it didn't save, so you don't actually have to create the label anymore. Uh, you just have to pass in a few things, and uh, and here they are down here. So I'm going to say, like, let's say a thousand mil satoshis, and then like uh, for the description, maybe like uh, bolt bolt party uh, with a quote there. So this is this is all JSON, which is like the lingua franca of the web nowadays. And so I'm going to create the invoice, and I get a bolt eleven. So I'm gonna go switch to another screen here where I basically have another node. This is a node that's backed up by another C-Lightning node. Uh, and so here I got a pay invoice uh, mutation. And so here's a, a, a Bolt 11 parameter that's passed in. And uh, it, you just uh, paste it in here into the parameters into the query. And when we run this, uh, it'll say, okay, pay invoice, okay is true, it worked. And so if we go back to the original one, we can do our query mutations again. And you'll see at the bottom, Bolt Party, paid. Uh, so that's a demo of being able to kind of query the state of your node and, uh, and uh, pay and create and pay an invoice. Some of the further developments, I just spent a couple hours on this yesterday at, at our, our hackathon in Austin. Uh, so some of the further development, it would, it would be cool, like I kind of hinted at, it would be cool to basically query uh, kind of the relationships of your Bitcoin node. Like, so if, you're, if you have an invoice, maybe you'd wanna be able to query the, the channel it was paid across and you know, maybe look at some of the on-chain activity associated with that uh, if you're trying to build some sort of an explorer of the Lightning Network. So that, that type of stuff is uh, what this would be useful for and uh, hopefully it would help uh, see Lightning become more popular. Uh, that's, that's it. Great, super practical. Cool. Um, yeah, Justin, so uh, I think this is really neat because, uh, you know, when you look across different implementations and things, you want to you protect yourself by having as many different ones, you know, as systems running as possible. So abstracting it out to GraphQL is a really smart idea because uh, you could consume it as well on the other side from almost anywhere because the, the constructs are almost the same. So I think it's really cool. Yeah, thanks. I mean, it would be interesting if you could have one uh, sort of query thing like a query engine that would work the same way across the multiple implementations. That would also be quite interesting. You know, if you could plug in LND and it would look the same way to the query, uh, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. It would be nice for end users as well, like people that are just don't really understand anything to build something for them to 
like let's say an accountant to look through all the things that have been paid and be able to look for certain invoices. Yeah, it's like a traversal. Aspects. Yeah, you could sort of like, uh, you could see something simple and then you kind of dive in. I think this is what, this is the type of app that this would be good for building, is if you're kind of an explorer where you want to like see some stuff and then sort of dive in deeper, that would be a good app. But again, this isn't an app, this is a, this is a, uh, a library. Yeah, or larger, larger enterprise businesses that are doing a lot of stuff and, uh, you know, paying a lot of things and you could find out, you know, how many, uh, you know, really, really dig down into data, which is nice. Yeah, I mean, that's the level you want to implement these things is at the a lower level, get all the, you know, the ability to get the data uh, and then you build the, the, the user experience on top of that. So, I don't know, it's just an idea. Hopefully it nice. works, but it's early. <laughs> Cool. Any other questions? All right. Well, uh, I let me, uh, share my screen really quick. Uh, so Spike earlier had shared his product. I just wanted to show it off on the, on the stream really quick because I think it's kind of cool. So, uh, Do it. yeah, uh, it looks like uh, just really quick. It looks like what they built was a, uh, the ability to like upload a file and then charge people uh, to uh, download that file. And so I thought that was a pretty neat, uh, a pretty neat idea, and I wanted to share it real quick. So, cool. Very nice. All right, I think that's it, man. That I did not expect that many projects. I think uh, with Patrick's last one, that's fifteen total, which is pretty crazy. Um, so we're gonna take a thirty-minute break. Uh, we're gonna have closing ceremonies. And then uh, we're gonna tally up all our scores. And so get out and vote, okay? Cause this will help us determine um, who receives like the first, second and third place prizes. Um, I'm gonna share the link with you guys in the chat real quick, just in case you guys miss it. I'm also gonna tweet it. So yeah, uh, we'll touch base in about 30 minutes. So I'll see everyone later, bye. Thanks Andrew.